Many thanks for joining us on News Now on TV360 Nigeria. I am Aneta Felix. And with less than 48 hours to the governorship and state house of assembly elections, President Muhammad Buhari is urging Nigerians to come out in greater number than they did on February 23rd. The president made the call in his message to citizens ahead of the polls. He noted that the forthcoming elections are as important as the presidential polls, asking the, uh, them for massive turnout. The second and final phase of the 2019 general elections comes up on Saturday, March 9th, with Nigerians voting for governors and members of the houses of assembly in the states. Let me once again extend my condolences to the families of those who lost their lives or sustained injuries as a result of accidents or criminal violence during the elections. The onus is once again on qualified people to turn out in large numbers to exercise their civic rights. With the prudential poll behind us, let us not become complacent and fail to vote in the gubernatorial poll. The forthcoming elections are as important for good governance as that of the presidency and the National Assembly. Indeed, governance at the state level is closer to us and should touch our lives more directly. That is why it is vital for us to participate in the choice of who governs us at the state level. I, therefore, urge you to troop out massively on Saturday to elect your governors and state lawmakers. As a member of all progressive Congress, I recommend those standing on the platform of the party to you as we are guided by progressive ideals and we will not disappoint you. Equally, I urge you to comport yourself properly as you turn out for the election. The Abuja Division of the Courts of Appeal has sacked the APC candidate George Agara in the March 9 governorship elections in Enugu State. The appellate court and the judgments delivered also affirmed the earlier nomination of Ayogu Eze as the lawful candidate of the APC in the governorship polls. The appellate court in a unanimous judgment delivered by Justice Abdul Aboki set aside the judgment of Justice Iyang Eko of the Federal High Court seating in Abuja, who had earlier ordered Ainek to replace him with Ogara as the APC governorship candidate in Enugu State. The appellate court also held that the suit was fouled out of time and should not have been entertained in the first instance. The Court of Appeals seating in Jalingo has ordered the stay of execution on the disqualification of the governorship candidate of the All Progressives Congress in Taraba State. The court gave the order a day after the Federal High Court in Jalingo disqualified Sani Danladi from participating in the coming governorship election in the state. The APC candidate was disqualified for falsifying his age in documents submitted to INEC. The party had vowed to contest his disqualification which he described as a witch hunt. The Federal High Court seating in Mina has dismissed a certificate forgery case filed by the PDP against Governor Abubakar Bello and his deputy. The court upheld the objections of the defendants, stating that the suit was, was uh, contravened uh, the Section 285, Subsection 9 of Nigeria's Constitution. The judgment comes barely 72 hours after the court dismissed the suit filed by the PDP, challenging the eligibility of the candidates of the APC in the coming elections in the state. The suit was filed by the PDP Secretary Mohamed Zindun, who had alleged that both Bello and his deputy had presented forged certificates to INEC. Ahead of the coming elections, national leader of the APC, Bola Tinubu, has charged members of the party 
to go out on Saturday to vote for its governorship candidate, Mabajide Sonwuru, speaking at a stakeholders meeting in Lagos. Ashiwaju Tinubu, who, des who described the poor turnout in the just concluded elections, directed all world leaders to embark on door to door campaigns conversing in the uh, remaining 48 hours of the polls. Tinubu also advised the people not to engage in any form of violence, insisting that if election was held freely and fairly, APC will defeat its opponents. We don't want a fight. We want the peace. We want to win election. Those people with level of confidence and level of support, those of us with that level of confidence, we trust that we are not going to fight. We trust, we assure you, we are going to beat our opponent back. At the polls. Definitely, there is no need for violence. When you are confident you are going to win, you don't disturb the vote. So, don't mind them, even when they provoke you, don't pay them any attention. You go now to your watch, and then tomorrow you must see your leadership at the LGA level. Tell them what role can you play to help come fast, to help bring out people. Meanwhile, some members of the All Progressives Congress in Surulere have dismissed allegations that they did not vote for the party in the last presidential and national assembly elections in the state. Speaking at a rally in Surulere, leader of Ward G1, Wahid Olayiwola, also dismissed reports that former state governor Babatinde Fashala is not in support of the party's governorship candidate, Babajide Songwulu. Olayiwala noted that they decided to rally in support of Songwulu to encourage and tell the people of Surulere that the Saturday, March 9 governorship election is a must win for the APC. We are gathered here to counter the rumor, which all so many people they are saying about our captain, about our captain, Mr. Babatunde Raji Fajola. As a minister for works, power, and housing, that we didn't support Sonwolu and in twice. That's why we come out in full to show people that Sonwolu is our man. The vice is our man. We are supporting them with all our effort. All of us, we must call out in masses to vote for Sonwolu and the vice and the house of assembly because if you have opened our door for them if they enter no way to push them out again we are begging all our people to come out in fully to vote for our people the Situation Room is calling on the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to check the activities of the Nigerian military in elections. In a statement by the Executive Director, Policy and Legal Advocacy Center and Convener, NCSSR, Clement Wanko, on Thursday, they clarify that the Army is only needed to ensure security during the distribution of election materials and for the protection of electoral officers, they are asking INEC to limit the role of the army to ensure peace in the forthcoming governorship elections on Saturday, March 9th. The situation notes the worrying trend of increased and excessive involvement of the military and security of officials in elections in Nigeria. These concerns have mounted fully from the 23rd February 2019 elections. The situation would like to restate the provisions of Section 29, Subsection 3 of the Electoral Act, which provides that the deployment of Nigerian Armed Forces for elections shall be at the request of INEC 
and only for the purpose of distribution and distribution and delivery of electoral materials and protection of election officials. Situation calls on the armed forces to restrict themselves to these responsibilities as defined by INEC and the electoral law. Situation also calls on security agencies to ensure that it provides adequate security for the elections and in a manner that does not allow or encourage violence to be used as a tool for vote suppression. Ahead of the coming elections, the Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, has directed air officers, commanding and field commanders to ensure the safety of lives and property in states across Nigeria. The force has also deployed jets, including intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance platforms to various flashpoints in support of the Nigerian police and other security agencies for the elections. The Air Chief notes that contingency plans have been placed in case of any breakdown of law and order. It however cautioned officials of the force to cooperate in uh, accordance with the code of conduct promulgated by the defense headquarters for members of the armed forces during elections. In the same vein, the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, has deployed seven Deputy Inspectors General of Police, ten Assistant Inspectors General of Police, and scores of police commissioners across states in the country. According to the IGP's directive, the DIGs are to cover the six geopolitical zones, the AIGs will cover the zonal command, while the CPs will complement the efforts of the Commissioners of Police in 36 states command and the FCT. The DIG in charge of operations, Abdul Majid Ali, is the coordinator of the deployment, while other DIGs will be in charge of various zones. Now with this latest deployment, each command now has an additional three CPs deployed to the three sanitary districts in their respective states of assignment, which will form part of security management base for the command CPs. The organized labor led by President of the Nigerian Labor Congress, Ayub Waba, have paid a congratulatory visit to President Muhammad Buhari at the presidential villa in Abuja on Thursday. While assuring the president of their support, Waba called on the government to address challenges facing workers in Nigeria. On his part, President Muhammad Buhari thanked them for their visit and pledged to work with the organized labor to ensure the country remains peaceful and prosperous. This funding of agri agricultural research and development, upgrading of our hospitals and academic institutions, as well as revitalizing the public service and the need for government to revisit the issue of tenure policy, which has made our public service top heavy, resulting in indiscipline and stagnation. We will submit a detailed white paper on those subjects for your kind consideration, Your Excellency. Your Excellency organized labor remain committed partners in national progress, peace, and stability. We urge governments to continue to engage us in national building, and we assure you we will continue also to support government policies and programs. We must consolidate on your successes of the past four years by strengthening the relationship between government and organized labor. As a first step, sir, we would like to suggest that the boards of the following critical labor market institutions are inaugurated the National Pension Commission. This, we are aware, is being delayed because the recommendation is stuck at the Senate. The Board of the National Social Insurance Trust Fund. The Board of Michael Imodu National Labor Institute. And lastly, the tripartite body that is supposed to be in place to continue to ensure social dialogue, that is the National Labor Advisory Council. These institutions are key pillars in labor government relations. The activation of those boards will surely ensure our successes to date are taken to the next level. By the grace of God, majority of Nigerians have given me another four-year mandate to continue pushing our change. <laughs> we will remain focused on our core pillars of reform, security, economy, and fight against corruption. I want to assure you that we as government will partner with all of you to ensure the next four years will be peaceful, prosperous, and corruption free. I therefore look forward to receiving all your written proposals 
and submissions on how we can partner together to achieve these goals. Five farmers lost their lives after the vehicle hit a landmine near Meiduguri, Bonu State Capital. The farmers were returning from their farmland when their truck exploded outside the town of Adamari. Uh, some 20 people also sustained injuries from the incident, which has been blamed on the Islamic State West Africa Province ISWAP militant group. Meanwhile, in another development, the police have confirmed 30 people killed in a fresh attack by armed bandits in Zamfara State. The incident was confirmed by Zamfara police spokesperson Mohammed Shehu, who said the attackers opened fire on residents and set homes ablaze. It comes just three days after bandits killed 32 vigilantes, an inquiry at a checkpoint set up by locals. Nigeria is today joining the rest of the world to celebrate the annual World Book Day. In Lagos, the I Read Mobile Library, in partnership with the Lagos State Government, have organized an event which also features the first literacy award ceremony for children in Nigeria. Onye Adekunle was there and now reports. The World Book Day is a day set aside by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, since 1995 to promote reading, publishing and copyright. To mark the annual school event, a cross-section of students from various schools in Lagos are gathered in this hall with their teachers, authors and stakeholders in the education sector. Students take turns to entertain the audience with different poetry and drama presentations drawn from the theme, The World We Want. The Special Advisor on Education to the Lagos State Governor, Obafemi Bankolemo, represented by the Director of Lagos Library Board, says the state government is committed to providing opportunities that will improve reading in the state. We are, we are trying to improve the reading habits of these uh, public schools in the state. You can see that many of them are there. They, they took part in the program and you can see how they were you know, performing. Very excellent. Co-convener Fumi Lori speaks on the partnership with the state government, while other notable speakers who graced the event also highlight the crucial role of authors in every modern society. Before now, I was selected by the, um, by the special advisor on education to work on a project tagged Lagos Reads. We wanted Lagosians to read, and the program was very successful in the few months that we ran it. Based on that success, I approached the Lagos State Library Board to say, I read has been organizing the World Book Day in the past two years. When we collaborate with a larger organization, we expect more success. And they were very open to that. So they've made many things happen to make it a very successful day. And we hope that the collaboration would continue. When we have events like this, we have um, authors, librarians, um, and other people come together to talk about books. So even if a child didn't really like reading, maybe listening to those people talk about how the books, um, how books have influenced their lives can actually encourage them to, to read a bit more. Maybe it can encourage them to put down a story because some, you find that some children actually like to tell stories and they just feel like they don't know how to do it, they can't do it because they think writing is for some special kinds of people. Yes, I agree, writers are special, but it's important that at book events like this, we also encourage children to, to express themselves. One thing is for you to read at home, one thing is for you to go for an event. That is exposure. And exposure is part of education. So this is our program where we inspire more students, more people to take to reading. Some students explain the benefits of education and how it has helped pave the way for them to pursue their dreams. Reading has made me the one-day governor of Lagos State here 2018. Of course, anybody who wants to get to that position must be someone who reads wide and reads hard. Must be a bookworm, let me just say it like that. So reading has really benefited me and several other people, the past one-day governors. When I saw people like Ara and all those people, I thought like I can be like them. I can be great like them. I go for drumming on Saturdays some Saturday, but I go to school on weekdays. 
Is she read because of you want to understand yourself? Is she because of you want to explore, like find out about what goes on around us? You should read because of you want to know like the stories of people and all. Is she because you want to learn moral lessons and everything? Finally, the event is capped up with the presentation of awards to deserving students who have taken part in competitions in the past year. There's no doubt e-books have taken the world by surprise. With a mobile device, you can actually read on the go. But some authors say that it is better. Actually, some books are better read when you have the hard copy, like this one I'm holding. Oni Adekunle, TV360, Nigeria. Thanks for that, Oni. I will now turn to Fidelia Agunta for news and business right after this. Do stay with us. Um, what's your name? I'm not so there, Morifi. May we check your own list, cause the list where they are side. I'm not so there, your name never I do. Your name is Onoriode. You even went as a fashion designer. As you don't come back, so, eh? Now, I won't go as Akobori, Ovi. And Ovi won't go as pilots. That is impersonation. My own share for the national cake be that. Mr. Onosode. Mm -mm. Akobori. The amnesty program is an intervention project for sustainable economic development of the Niger Delta, which you are a beneficiary of, lying under pretext for your selfish gain and advantage, is robbing others of the same opportunity. And that is an act of corruption, not in my country. Uh. Corruption, not in my country. Stop corruption now. Thank you so much. Uh, you're welcome back. And of course, you're still watching News Now on TV 360 Nigeria. Well, we have Fidelia Agunta standing by. Hello, Fidelia. Hi, Aneta. So uh, I see that uh, a lady has managed somehow to combine beauty and business. Uh, please give us more details. Well, a 24-year-old entrepreneur is challenging beauty standards with her skincare startup, Body Secret. She learned how to make body products in Ghana and now she's teaching against skin bleaching and reminding that all is black, that black is actually very beautiful. This next report tells us more. After suffering from the effects of bleaching, Enia Debo turned to organic materials to repair her damaged skin. It was when she received more than enough accolades about her transformation that she decided to quit her job and focus full-time on skincare. It's been two years now since she started Body Secrets and business is looking up. In a day we can have, we can sell up to 20 bags and that will be over 100 or something thousand. And most times we sell 10 bags. It just depends on like, but in a week, Approximately, we can make 400 or 500,000 from the 5 kg luxury bag. NEA says the secret behind her success is quality raw materials, and she sources them from Ghana, Kotonou, and the northern part of Nigeria and produces in bulk by monthly to service her growing customer base. Like you saw with the black soap, it's involved a lot of manpower pounding and all of that. So after mixing, because I'm the only one that can do the formulation, so after mixing, then we we have people that will call, that will do the pounding, and removing them and putting them into containers, and then sealing, stickers. It's a lot of process before it gets to the store. NEA is on a mission to get black women to love and appreciate their skin tone. But the journey hasn't been easy, with challenges like sourcing the right materials and funding. Like the challenges is getting the right raw materials and getting them available because we can send for raw materials and it's going to take like two, three weeks for us to get them and probably customers are already waiting 
to get their products maybe we're out of stock or that's why we normally order before we go out of stock but most of the time they don't they don't meet up so we have to still apologize we have to still apologize to customers so that's one of the challenges and then font is a challenge we are not where we want to be so we obviously need like money for packaging and um, sorting out and distribution like i said w w even a production space because we i still make the products from my house so we need a, like a bigger space for production that is safe and ethic for everyone working from any soaps and scrubs to body secrets in august last year and she's looking to expand beyond this point in the nearest future. I see us um, at as one of the top natural skincare brand and um, body care brand in the sector of um, naturalist and natural body care and providing outlets and stores to end users and professional users um, to make it accessible for our customers because on, on the long term we see ourselves in we, we having a natural skincare body care company where we um, provide employment for a lot of people and at the same time have um, stores outlets in different locations in December 2018 body secrets made over 1 million naira from an anniversary sale of products. She currently receives orders from all around the world and is poised to being a leading name in the body care industry. Annette Felix, TV360, Lagos. Well, Nigeria imported a total of 1.38 billion liters of petroleum products in the months of January and February 2019. Now, this is according to data from the Nigeria Port Authority. The data also shows that the foreign port in January was higher than that of February, as a total of 705,185 metric tons of fuel was imported compared to only 281,000. 297 metric tons imported in February. It adds that frozen fish topped the nation's import for the month of February as the country reportedly imported 2.463 million metric tons of the product in the month under review. Well, up next is a stock market review. Don't go away. Today in the reds for the Nigeria Stock Exchange as the market value dips for the second consecutive day, this time by 0.35%. At the close of trading, the All Share Index stood at 32,010.06 basis point, while the market capitalization came in at 11.937 trillion naira, dropping by about 40 billion naira from the close seen yesterday. Now, with loss spread ac across all sectors in the market, the banking index took the least hit, declining by a minus 0.13% compared to the insurance index, which dropped by 1%. But despite these losses, Stambik IBTC continues to stay afloat. As we can see it right here, surging by 1 Naira 40 cover. It is closely followed by Cadbury, Dangote Flowers and ETI, which is closing 2.19% higher than what was seen yesterday. On the flip side, it was a bad day for Mobile, Dangote Cement, PZ Cousins and Flower Mills of Nigeria PLC as a top loser's chart today. In summary, we can see that three 3,119 deals were transacted on the floor of the market today, valued at 2.739 billion naira, and a total of 218 million shares were, tra were traded on the floor of the market. And in the global scene, on the global scene, actually, FTSE is falling, the Dow is also falling, and so is the Nikkei as they are all depreciating, closing 
indirect, just like the NSC. Well, that's it from the world of business. It's back to Annette Felix. Sadly, another bear's market there, but we have to see what's happening in other parts of the world. Efforts to cop the Democratic Republic of Congo's worst Ebola outbreak are stumbling. This is according to medical charity MSF. In a statement released on Thursday, doctors without borders say the Ebola response is failing to bring the epidemic under control after seven months. It highlighted that more than 40% of deaths are occurring in communities rather than in Ebola treatment centers. The outbreak emerged in North Kivu last August and then spread to neighboring Ituri province. It has claimed 561 lives out of 849 recorded cases, according to the latest figures by the DRC Health Ministry. And in sports, UEFA has fined Atletico Madrid coach Diego Simone 20,000 euros for a provocative goal celebration in their 2 0 Champions League win over Juventus. The European football governing body said in a statement that its disciplinary tribunal had sanctioned Simone for improper conduct after he turned towards the crowd and put his hands on the trousers uh, to celebrate Atletico's opening goal in the round of 16 first leg tie on February 20. Last season, the Argentine missed the European League final when it was banned for four European matches after being sent off against Arsenal in the semi-finals for shouting at the referee and pushing the fourth official. And that's it here in News Now. Thanks for watching. I am Aneta Felix. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.